the Karate Kid for the NES, based on the first two Columbia films with Machio and the late Morita, circa 1987. It's by the combined efforts of Atlas, a pre-Persona Atlas, the same people responsible for Wacky Races, Rockin' Cats, Labyrinth, Friday the 13th, etc. On behalf of, ready for this ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Yeah, that's right, the infamous LJN. Holy shit, what a ride we're gonna be in for. So I'd strap the fuck in if I were you. Once again, if you've seen, or at the very least recall, the entire franchise, which has been long since evolved into Cobra Kai in recent years, and is on the verge of kicking off its sixth and last season for the record, pun barely intended, the premise should be familiar, and as ever, God help me if I ever come face to face with anyone who falls outside said criteria. The LaRusso family of Newark, New Jersey, have relocated to picturesque Reseda, California. Lucille, portrayed by Randy Heller, of the ladies' club, Bullworth, Monster and Lawn, Mad Men fame, and her calm, yet at times hot-tempered son, Daniel, portrayed by the iconic Ralph Macchio of The Outsiders, Crossroads, My Cousin Vinny, Beer League, Eight is Enough, Ugly Betty, Psych, and The Deuce fame, and despite the latter's efforts to fit in, especially when hitting it off with Allie Mills, portrayed by Elizabeth Shue, known for adventures in babysitting, Cocktail, Back to the Future 2 and 3, Soap Dish, Leaving Las Vegas, The Trigger Effect, The Saint, Palmetto, Hollow Man, Tuck Everlasting, Hide and Seek, Piranha 3D, Death Wish 2018, CSI and The Boys amongst many. He faces constant harassment from her ex, the extremely assertive Johnny Lawrence, portrayed by William Zabka, known for European Vacation, Just One of the Guys, Back to School, The Power Within, High Voltage, Python 1 and 2, Give Me a Break, Equalizer 85 and Psyche, who's a black belt and the top student at a martial arts dojo, Cobra Kai, run and taught by none other than the corrupt, maniacal sensei slash ex-special forces Vietnam veteran John Kreese, portrayed by Martin Cove, known for Death Race 2000, Rambo First Blood Part 2, Steel Justice, The Extendables, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood amongst many, and is part of a gang made up of other students in Johnny's rank, namely Bobby Brown, not to be confused with the R&B artist, God forbid, let's not get anything fucking twisted here, Jimmy, Tommy, and Dutch, all portrayed by Ron Thomas, Tony O'Dell, the late Rob Garrison, and the already retired Chad McQueen, respectively. As a result, Daniel turns to a neighborly Japanese handyman slash botany expert slash war veteran, Mr. Nariyoshi Kesuke Miyagi, and fuck no, I'm not making this shit up, goddammit. Portrayed by the late great Noriyuki Pat Morita, known for Columbo, The Odd Couple, Hawaii Five-0, MASH, the TV series from 72 through 83, Happy Days, Sanford and Son, Kung Fu, Welcome Back, Cotter, Babes in Toyland, O'Hara, Collision Course, Opposite Tall Guru Jay Leno, Do or Die, Honeymoon in Vegas, Miracle Beach, Bloodsport 2 and 3, American Ninja 5, The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu, Mulan and Royal Kill, to teach him the legendary martial art of karate, via daily household chores, including fence painting, house painting, floor sanding, and car waxing, for self-defense against his tormentors, and eventually competes in, and wins, the All-Valley Karate Tournament. Regarding the next two sequels, not counting the infamous Next Karate Kid with the Pre Boys Don't Cry and Million Dollar Baby Hillary Swank, or the 2010 remake with Smith and Chan, God forbid, both LaRusso and Miyagi visit the latter's home in Okinawa, Japan, to see a sick dying dad with the support of Yuki and Kumiko, portrayed individually by the also late Nobu McCarthy and then newcomer Tamlin Tomita, despite an inevitable encounter with old acquaintances turned rivals, the Toguchis, namely Sato and his nephew Chosen, portrayed once again individually by the also late Danny Kamikona and Yuji Okumoto, the latter who's known for Better Off Dead, Real Genius, True Believer, American Yakuza, Brain Smasher, A Love Story, The Truman Show, Pearl Harbor, The Crow, Wicked Prayer, Bones and Inception, and current owner of Kona Kitchen in Seattle and Linwood, Washington alongside his wife Angela. Increased, reprised by the returning Cove, teams up with an old war comrade, Terry Silver, portrayed by Thomas Ian Griffith, yet another newcomer at the time, thus vowing vengeance towards LaRusso and Miyagi by recruiting a ruthless martial artist, Bad Boy Mike Barnes, portrayed by Sean Kanan, and his partners Dennis and Snake, portrayed by William Christopher Ford, otherwise credited as Christopher Paul Ford, and Jonathan Abelson, son of the late director, respectively, despite LaRusso yet again heading it off with a pottery designer across the street from Miyagi's newly christened bonsai shop, Jessica Andrews, portrayed by the teen witch Louise herself, Robin Lively, and making every effort to rebuild every aspect of his life. Did I forget to mention Gabe Jarrett, aka Mitch Taylor from the aforementioned Real Genius, appears as the random downstairs club patron slash rival, Rudy?
Either way, all synopsis breakdowns aside, the game's premise exemplifies those of the first two films, specifically the All-Valley Tournament from 1 and the majority of Danny's Okinawan trip in 2. As I've alluded to with Surf Ninjas last time, the gameplay framework is in the same plateau as Irem's Kung Fu, <laughs> in which you're assuming the control of Ola Russo, as he not only takes on four opponents at the tournament, none of whom resemble Johnny Lawrence, let alone any of his jackass Cobra Kai comrades, I might add. Yeah! But also the countless, unrelenting fuckstick delinquents during his three-chapter Okinawan Odyssey. As expected, there will be many, I shit you not, many approaching your ass at all times, for which full preparation and timing are key. Therefore, I'd do whatever the motherfucking Christ is necessary to make them your bitches before they do vice versa. Ditto for recurring end boss chosen, and expect to run into that piss-taking baka bastard often. Control-wise, the D-pad forces Danny to haul ass anywhere to his heart's content, crouch and jump fire down and up individually, once again against a Kung Fu and even Russian attack in Trojan, and B and A are for his standard kicks and punches individually, the latter two of which can only be performed in juxtaposition with the D-pad, particularly when facing forward, right or left, whereas Danny's trademark crane kick and drum punch techniques are performed via those same two buttons, MINUS the involvement of the D-pad, and more of which can be scored upon taking down each of the punk-ass Okinawan rivals while also regaining his vitality, including the Spearmen in the fourth and final area before reaching the Obon Festival. Supporting characters are also used for regaining his vitality all the way, including old Miyagi-san, Kumiko, and God forbid, Sato. In addition, throughout the second and third areas, there's one of three optional, I shit you not optional, bonus rounds you'll participate in, containing elements from the two films. Catching six flies in a row with chopsticks, as Miyagi does in the first film. You'll be gonna rock! Dodging the swinging hammer six times without falling off, and chopping down six ice blocks in a row with both the former and latter containing a sensitive time frame of 15 seconds. All of which awards you 5,000 points, plus three extra uses of the crane kick technique and four of the drum punch technique when flawlessly accomplished. Should LaRusso happen to suffer way too much damage, or be exposed to any environmental perils, who could have guessed it's HIS ASS and inevitably in turn yours? In spite of how corrupted and fragmented the controls are, even when being cornered by the douchey-ass delinquents with a slim yet existent chance of being juggled non-stop and suffering from that dreaded case of knockback, CASTLEVANIA ANYONE?! and facing the never-ending wind torrents, birds and twigs in Area 3, plus the tumbling boulders in the earlier recounted fourth and final area, they're not as irksome and nightmarish as many make them out to be, and nor is the overall gameplay structure, and I'm expressing all this with, say it with me now, ANTI-WAR SHANCE! In regards to Karate Kid's challenge, while the overall four-tier campaign appears to be straightforward, there's a load of bullfuckery that'll ensue throughout, including the intermittent scuffles against the Okinawan jackasses and the Spearmen, the latter of which are capable of landing a drum punch on before knocking their asses into fucking oblivion, ditto for the aforementioned bonus rounds, in which timing and precision are pivotal as fuck. And before I forget, you're awarded only one use of both the crane kick and drum punch if you happen to fuck up in or half-ass any of them. At least Chosen's a major goddamn pushover, or so I should have realized long before now, and, and I, I dare, dare someone, someone to, to take, take the pass. As opposed to every other godforsaken, or should I say programmer forsaken stage aspect, whom you can also ignore at the end of the third area during the typhoon while rescuing the hostage girl atop the bell tower, namely Yuna. No goddamn it, not that Yuna! Portrayed in the second film by Tracy Toguchi. Also, while facing off against that dick-faced motherfucker for the last time during the Obon Festival, protect Kumiko at all costs or she'll plummet to her doom, resulting in another tragically lost life. Ah! Ain't that a bitch, right? Even after owning his ass, you're awarded with a last-minute congratulatory speech from Miyagi himself, complete with his trademark departing wink. I mean, seriously, LJN and Atlas, what the fuck?
Other than that, you're given only 3 lives, more of which are awarded individually upon scoring every 20,000 points, and absolutely no continues whatso goddamn ever, so I'd refer to and take under strenuous advisement every hint I've been providing so far, since I'd rather drink myself blind to no end like Al Bundy, Homer Simpson, Brian Griffin, the angry nerd himself, James Rolfe, Isato Katsuragi from Evangelion, and even Rock Lee and Tsunade from Naruto, than to repeat myself to, to the, the ultimate motherfucking break of irreversible goddamn apathy! On the graphical forefront, as dull and second-rate as they appear to be, even by today's standards, every element at least represents those of its source material and then some. But then again, why even waste time with any half-assed, mealy, mushy, praise-filled understatements? Daniel by himself, not just in-game, but on the title alongside his mentor, modeled after the poster for the second film, I might add, and during the bonus rounds, is nothing short of a spot-on caricature of a cinematic likeness. Ditto for Miyagi, especially at the end, Kumiko, Sato, all of whom yet again also serve as life support, and especially that goddamn prick Chosen. Apart from Danny's basic techniques, his two iconic specials, The Crane and the Drum, are translated spot-on from the two films, as were their pulsating physical challenges that served as inspiration for the bonus endurance rounds. Most of the random-ass delinquent adversaries that constantly materialize, whether with bare hands or armed with spears, leave tons to be desired, but not so much the varying backgrounds for all the stages, save for the horrendous-as-shit ground clutter. Granted, it's from the same year as the first Castlevania and Mega Man, along with Goonies 2, Section Z, Rygar, Solomon's Key, Mighty Bomb Jack, Arkanoid Xanak, Athena, Karnov, Wizards and Warriors, Kid Nicky Radical Ninja, and even fucking Jaws, the latter of which I'm more than certain everyone recalls as the subject of my first ever review from nearly a decade ago, and yet another LGN release I might add. and the former two being the absolute cream of the crop, thereby excessively and uncontrollably shitting on all the rest. And god damn I might wait off base here. But in all frankness, that's no excuse for the way the final presentation aspects turned out, especially when you're incapable of backtracking unlike a few of the other titles I mentioned, all immature ass rambling aside. Music and sound-wise, composed by Hirohiko Takayama of Gacha and Friday the 13th, two other LGN releases developed by Atlas, Xexus for the already defunct Hudson Soft and Panic Restaurant fame, the latter for Taito and the also defunct EIM group, alongside Tsukasa Masuko, known for Labyrinth on Famicom for Tokuma Soft, based on the late Bowie's songs and Trevor Jones's scores. Refer to my 37th review from Season 4. <laughs> The majority of the songs, while also tolerable, lose their luster and novelty after a significant time frame, except maybe for the opening theme and the second stage, aka Okinawa Area 1. The sound effects are, in addition, nothing short of grating after a while, given the NES's limitations, but ultimately presents fuck all whatsoever. I mean, I'd rather endlessly vomit in a swamp than to succumb myself to such a dissonant ass, interference infused irreparama. Moving on to the replayability scale, at this juncture, there's jack shit to comment on whatsoever regarding Karate Kid on the NES, apart from improving your overall offensive strategies in the latter three side-scrolling areas, not counting the introductory tournament and nailing all three of the bonus rounds without a single solitary snafu, plus two separate two-player campaigns, one of which involves a head-to-head -head match between Danny and Chosen, no less, the likes of which add barely any variety at all, and turn out to be one major, searing-ass trance of tedium after another. Regardless, stick with either Irem's Kung Fu and or Cobra Kai on Switch, amongst every other stellar as all Get Out side-scroller ever conceived, but do yourself and the rest of all humanity a noble favor! Leave this horrendous-ass shitpile excuse for a film-turned-game by the side of the goddamn road, and, and haul me your ass like no one's ever done so before! Henceforth, my final verdict in a nutshell, as I've mentioned with Home Alone, amongst many examples of landmark cinematic works that have been gamified throughout history, alongside a guest of mine nearly a decade ago, just because the film was, or turned out to be, wonderful and memorable, it doesn't mean it'll necessarily translate or flesh out well as a video game adaptation. 
Granted, there are other shining and much more worthy examples, a few including Batman, Willow, Gremlins 2, Sweet Home, and the like, but what we've just experienced so far is a major motherfucking disgrace to LaRusso's immortal ass legacy, and a third rate, technically crafted aberration with absolutely no right to exist whatso goddamn ever. I mean, shit, way to fuck us over again, LJN! Despite having been long since fucking condemned, Seriously, I can name five other films that would've translated better in arcade or console game format, no matter what decade they're from. Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone, The Lost Boys, Roadhouse, The Adventures of Fort Fairlane, and even The Perfect Weapon, with my honorable mentions aiming towards, oh, I don't know, every Shokosugi film ever made, cause they could've turned out to be more deserving candidates than that ass-demolishing, toe-jerking, rage-inducing aberration, which, and I must stress, I strongly advise steering clear of at all costs, like an apprehensive-ass rival co-worker with a raging hard-on for standing your rap, or experimenting for yourself, your choice. As long as it's all in, oh, I don't know, good faith and fair fucking mental moderation. Until then, one and all, Banzai! This is the one and only Hardcore Retro God stoically signing off. Oh, God!